What's going on beautiful internet family? My name is Dan Davis and I'm the creative director here on danstube.tv which is Australia's number one ranked drone YouTube channel. Today I'm revisiting the DJI Cellular Dongle 2. I did a video on the channel recently and it did really well but a lot of people were saying that I didn't push it beyond the point that it lost the remote controller connection and then switched over to the 4G connection. So today we're Retesting it again. This time I thought I'd test it with the Air 3. Last time was the Mini 4 Pro test. So, as I showed you in the initial video, all you've got to do is remove the battery from the Air 3. You then loosen the two screws under here. It comes with an included screwdriver when you get the cellular dongle too. And then you basically just pull off this back piece here once it's loosened, like so. There we go. And then it exposes the location where you can put in the cellular dongle too. The next step is to connect up the two antennas to the actual dongle itself. And then there's a little bit of give here, so you can kind of push the antennas into the body of the unit. You just want to line it up with the USB-C, push it into place, and it literally just sits perfectly in the body of the Air 3. And then when you put the plastic panel back on, there's actually this little sponge-like material almost that pushes down the dongle to make sure that it's a nice snug fit. So all you have to do is basically just line everything up with all the different clips, clip it into place like so. That's with the panel on. You can see there's a little bit of give there. So this is the screwdriver that you get with the kit. You basically just tighten each side up. You'll feel there's not much of a thread to it. It just screws into place with a few twists and it will let you know when it's fully locked. So just before I launched the Air 3 with the cellular dongle 2, I just wanted to mention some phenomenal savings that I have for my Australian audience. If you go over to DJI Australia, which is d1store.com.au, use the code DANSTUBE on checkout, and you can save on most drones, cameras, and accessories over there. I also have some other links below for my international viewers, so make sure to check those out below. The final few steps, which I showed in the other video, is just connecting up to a personal hotspot or a wireless so the controller actually has to connect up to a personal hotspot in this instance here and then you would you know go down to the Wi-Fi settings make sure that it's connected up so it's connected up to the Dange tube hotspot which is my phone and then from there you'll see on the screen there's a little 4G icon so I can tap on that and then it gives me the option to enable the enhanced transmission now it gives us the whole warning message which I read in the previous video so once that's enabled, we can now see in the top right corner, I've got 16 satellites, 17 satellites, and I've also got a 4G connection. And the RC signal as well is full bars right now. So basically when the RC signal drops to zero bars, it will then switch automatically over to the 4G connection, which is what we're gonna be testing out today. And it's interesting because we have amazing range from these newer drones anyway. So something like the 4G dongle isn't necessary for a lot of people. And there we go, weak signal. It has now completely dropped the RC. It's still just holding on. <laughs> Only just holding on. There we go. So it says weak signal, adjust antennas, remote controller signal may be blocked. But we can now see, even though I've got no RC connection right now, I can see that I'm still able to fly in 4G. So it was stuttering just a little bit there. But now we can see we've actually got the cross through the RC. So if I tap on that, it actually says disconnected, right? But you can see that I can turn around and I still have phenomenal reception. No issues or, or sorry, transmission, not reception. So I still have amazing transmission here. No issues at all with uh, like latency or input delay or anything like that. It's very responsive. I noticed just before it dropped out though, there was a tiny bit of delay as it was losing the RC and then it immediately switched over to 4G and 4G's full bars on both sides, 4G is completely, perfectly fine. So it says RC signal weak, unable to disable enhanced transmission. So now it's purely depending on the enhanced transmission, purely depending on the 4G connection. And you can see that we've got no issues. Right, it's got no issues at all. Similar kind of experience in terms of the input, in terms of the responsiveness, in terms of just the whole experience. So phenomenal in this kind of situation where there are a lot of trees around and where the signal does drop out. Uh, great kind of scenario here because it just switches over. You don't have to think about anything. And as you can see, a very reliable experience. I haven't had 
any issues at all. And as I start to fly back, I'm curious to see what happens because there will be a bit of delay as it switches from the 4G back to the remote controller. So there we go. The remote controller has connected again, but there is a little bit of latency because it's just at the, the, the end of what it can actually handle, basically. It's on the lowest point of the transmission. Um, so it is gonna be dropping out a little bit as I fly back. And so at this point now, this is what a lot of people were saying in my video. Um, I wasn't actually fully testing it with the 4G. So you just saw the test there where it does drop out from the remote controller and purely switches over to 4G. And it was great. There was definitely a little bit of delay there. So just at that end point, just before it switches to 4G, there's a little bit of delay there. It's a little bit awkward, a little bit fiddly, but then straight when it switches across, it's unbelievable. Like it's just reliable, it's consistent, and it feels like you're just flying it normally with the remote controller. So great for people who are in built up areas where you do find that you know the, the feed drops out a lot or you're noticing that the remote controller signal is dropping pretty quickly in a built up area. You know, perfect example of where the 4G dongle uh, would be phenomenal, the DJI Cellular Dongle 2. So that was it, nice and simple. Brought it back to myself now. Uh, very easy flight and it was great to see how reliable it was. So as you would expect, the Air 3 and the DJI Cellular Dongle 2 did an awesome job together. I was very impressed with just the smoothness of that switch across to the 4G. Yes, near the end it was a little bit sluggish, but straight when it went to 4G, it was responsive and as you would expect from a DJI drone. So the Cellular Dongle 2 is a really cool accessory to get your hands on, especially if you are in a built up area, especially if you notice that your range dips very quickly. Keep in mind that at this moment of the time of me doing this video, it's only supported by the Air 3 and the Mini 4 Pro. I did release a video on the channel not long ago to showcase it with the Mini 4 Pro. You do need an extra accessory to make that work. So go and check out that video. And keep in mind, you've got to follow all the rules and regulations, keep the drone in line of sight, uh, make sure you've got a spotter in certain situations where you might need a spotter. Um, but outside of that, really awesome accessory. For a lot of people, I don't know whether it's something that you need. I find that for myself, the range from the drone is great. I never really have any issues. I came to this area specifically just so I could have the remote control the signal drop really quickly because we're in a dense like bush basically. Um, so in that kind of situation, you know, it's great to have something like this in built up areas where there's lots of signals penetrating the drone and the controller. That's where you might benefit from something like the cellular dongle too. But honestly, for me, I feel like I'm probably not gonna use it too much if I'm going to be honest with you, because I find that the range and the reception, the signal, everything I'm getting from just the, the drone and the controller is exactly all I need. But do keep that in mind. It is a great accessory for a lot of different scenarios for a lot of different people. Keep in mind, you do need to remove the battery to connect up the uh, cellular dongle to the Air 3. And then this is the accessory you need for the Mini 4 Pro. So it's actually like a mounting kit, I guess they call it, a mounting kit, where you can actually mount it in here and it does come with the antennas as well. So you've got a few options for the Mini 4 Pro or just directly into the body of the Air 3. Anyway, thank you so much for watching guys. Like I mentioned earlier in the video, I do have some awesome discount codes below as well as some special links for my audience. So I've got some drone bundles. I've also got that link and code to the D1 store where you can use the code Dan's Tube to save on most drones, cameras, and accessories. I've got some Amazon links below, DJI links, a bunch of stuff down there. Make sure to check that out. Let me know if there's any other tests you want to see on the channel with the DJI Cellular Dongle 2 or anything else. And I'll chat to you in the next one. Peace.